What's up everybody? In this video, we will be going over how to do a no pour reusable auger tech for your Petri dishes. I know a lot of you have seen and maybe used the condiment cups that are very easily disposable one time use, but these are multi-use, very durable PP5 plastic screw on top. So I'm gonna go over the process of how to prep this, the recipe that I prefer to use and then we'll take a look after it's done to see the results. Let's get into it. So what we wanna start doing now is putting holes in these lids. Now if you don't have a piece of metal that's sharp enough, you may have to heat up a piece of metal to get the hole to go through the way you'd like it. And I would imagine that you could still use these without the hole if you tighten it, but don't tighten it all the way. But I would just go ahead and encourage you to tighten it all the way, then make the breathable hole on top, which we will cover with the micro pour tape. It's essentially rinse and repeat until you have them all complete. I got this piece of metal here in my dissection kit, which I thought would be useful for all the mushroom cloning and auger work that I do. You can find that in the link in the bio. All this stuff is in the bio. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and take your micro pour tape. This is our breathable tape, and we will go ahead and cover up that hole we made. Now, I typically like to do a double but it just depends on how clean your environment is and how much you're gonna be moving them around. So what we wanna do next is go ahead and measure out our agar agar powder. This is gonna be what solidifies the material in the Petri dish to make it a two dimensional plane. Then you have to have your nutrients and you can use some dried malt white extract or there's a lot of other recipes. Today what I'm gonna be using personally is grain water. This is from organic rye berries that I have soaked. And then after you soak them, the water is not waste. It can be used to create liquid cultures, which is to an advantage because as mushrooms or mycelium expand the territory, they excrete enzymes and those enzymes help break down the food matter. And depending on what they're eating, will often determine what type of enzymes they are producing. And if you already have them in the Petri dish, eating or digesting with those type of enzymes, when you put them onto the rye in the jar or oats, whatever you're using, wild bird seed, or in the bag, it's gonna help speed up the growth. And when you're doing the jumps from one food source to another, you know, that's where a lot of contamination may occur. So you wanna go ahead and streamline that process as much as possible, especially when it comes to the mycelium being healthy and already just, once again, eating a food that it's used to eating. So in this case, I'm gonna take 10 grams of agar agar powder and put it onto the scale. Now, if you want a harder auger, you can go higher. You can go up to maybe 12 for this 500 milliliter. If you're working with something like spores and you want to go for a softer one, you could even go down to like eight. Now, once again, I'm not going to be using any of the light malt extract today because I'm going to be using my nutrient broth that is the rye grain uh, leftover water and so this is going to act as my nutrients i mean you can mix a small amount of this in there or some other ingredients there's tons of recipes for this but in this case for me today i'll just be going with the grain water and the agar agar it's one less piece of equipment or one less piece of ingredients that you have to purchase when you already have to soak your grain all right so let's go ahead and get this stuff mixed up helps if you put it on some foil and just kind of crease it pour it in like such get that in there that's our light malt extract there we go now we're going to take our grain water and pour that in 
that is our nutrient and our liquid so remember we're not needing them to add water separately from this point because we have it in the grain water itself so get that where it needs to be 500 milliliters and today I'm going to be using one of my magnetic stir bars to just drop in there if you didn't have the stir bar there are plenty of other ways you can do this you can just put your top on there and you know, shake it up a lot you can put it on the stove top I have some videos on that of the procedure of mixing it together on the stove and you can also put it into the microwave both of these you really need to watch to make sure you don't get any boil over you're going to have a huge mess and there's a video of me doing this at home so that you can see the steps for that but I would encourage you to go ahead and invest in one of these little stir bars they don't or magnetic stir plates and then you need the bar so after that in that spin for about 10 to 15 minutes you can go ahead and if you want to it's optional put some food coloring in there that'll help you out black's a good color to use three drops in if you do not want to use food coloring and still get some of those effects you could do like activated charcoal that would make it black without the food coloring being in there so how do we get that thing out well a lot of times you can leave it in there or you can get one of these little magnetic uh, instruments and then it'll come right out All right, so everything's done. You could take this foil here and you could like put it over like such to help keep the water from falling onto the micro pour tape while it's in the pressure cooker. But in this case, I'm gonna be using a bag instead and placing them all in here. All right, be careful. Look at this here. Yeah. You can use these half pint jars to put on the bottom to kind of give it some room from just sitting down in the water. There's lots of different items that you can use. Then we'll take this, like this, put it over like that, continue adding our water. All right, so I've got my three and a half quarts of water in there. Let's get this lid on. When you're using something like grain water, it's gonna have a lot of sediment in there. I'll usually let it go about 30, 35 minutes opposed to the normal recommended 20 minutes you want to make sure that you have the air coming out of the top here for at least 10 minutes before you put the weight on like such and as i mentioned 15 psi grain water 30 35 minutes and you'll be good to go let's see how we've done here now ideally you wouldn't open this until you were in your clean room but i wanted you guys to see that everything was just fine Okay, let's get a few of these out, see what we're looking like. Nice and solidified. These things are ready to go. I appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video. If you found this stuff helpful, please like and comment and subscribe. It really helps me out, lets me know that I'm on the right track and I'm actually being helpful. So get outside, get in nature. I see fun guy. Do you?